Uh, Rob from Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. I can't wait to be seeing uh, an international tour down in Australia. What a lineup you've got. You're on with Cheap Trick and uh, uh, Bush, uh, Stone Temple Pilots, our Rose Tattoo and Electric Mary down here as well. What a, what a fantastic lineup to kick back live international touring in Australia. Yeah, it, it, the, for some reason, the way you made it sound like we're no, we're no better than than you know local Australian uh, uh, artists. It's um, the only difference is uh, yeah we we finally get to move out of our own kind of bubble quarantine world and uh, and and we get you know lucky enough to play outside of our 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 sphere. Um, no, but just trying to trying to bring back a sense of um c community that that you know for, for music um and for people to kind of feel like it's not such a post-apocalyptic sort of uh you know um uh this this kind of eerie sense that i i, I know a lot of people have and um yeah just coming coming together again you know open up open up the doors um it, it's it's no small small feat, and uh, I hope I'm yeah very proud to be a part of that. So I don't think uh, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club have played in the last three years. Is this going to be your first gig since 2019? Uh, first gig since 2019. Yeah, uh, we played like in Greece in 2019, and that was like the last show. And so since then, this will be yeah the first time we've. We've got back on the whole the horse, um, and so uh, uh, well, yeah, everyone's got a bit of jitters. I, I've seen a few friends of mine pl play shows, and that's all they talk about. You know, is just like the sort of. Um, it's not until you're told you're not allowed to play that you you know you kind of like <laughs> you know you start counting the minutes and the hours, and you're like, just, do I still do I still got it? Can I still you know, do I remember the songs and how they go? And, you know, um, so we, we, we had a, we had a good couple of rehearsals where, you know, it all came back uh, bizarrely quickly where it's like, okay, good. We, you know, we haven't lost that as well. Mm -hmm. um, some semblance of the memory is still intact there. Yeah, going back to that Greek uh, show that you uh, mentioned, uh, you opened that set list with Red Eyes and Tears, which was your very first single. The, so the very last show you did opened with the very first song, which was from, uh, I guess, you know, we've just passed the 20th anniversary of that. We've, uh, we're really carbon dating this band now. <laughs> yeah, we planned that out really, really well. Um, uh yeah, um, it was all it was <laughs> it was all very methodically conceptualized as a, as a twenty year project. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, we were we were toying around with 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 starting starting where we left off with with red eyes for for the for, for uh yeah playing playing uh playing with this 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 festival, but I don't know. We, we we're all, we're also kind of a uh, we also change our mind a lot, so yeah, we'll see. Yeah, looking at the set list of that Greek show, though, um, uh, King and Bones, uh, Beat the Devil's Tattoo, Stop Berlin, Rifles, Spread Your Love, Whatever Happened to My Rock and Roll. It's very hit centric, isn't it? You are really giving the fans what they want. Festivals um, kind of require require uh, you know pulling out all the stops with the time you're given to to you know you know you're, you're maybe not likely the band that people came out to see or you're you're kind of one on in the buffet line so uh uh and also just people standing in a field that are kind of waiting for one thing after another it changes you know just how you relate versus going into a club show that's that's your people and you know they they know every song and b-side and so you just you kind of approach that differently and festivals we kind of always just you know go in go in hot and <laughs> and and hopefully yeah leave wanting a little something more but uh yeah for, um 
We've also done the exact opposite. We've, we've just depending on the mood, like that's usually the mindset, but we've also had this really just stanky, like who gives a shit? And we've done just like slow dirgy ballads just because, you know, it, it, it re-empowers the, you know, your sense of like why you're doing this and why you're here to do the exact opposite of, you know, giving them what they want. So I, ne I never know which is gonna feel better and and so you know that's kind of why we leave it up to chance at that time it felt really good just to like you know go guns blazing but sometimes that's that can feel i don't know if people see it now that you said it if people see it coming well, <laughs> we might do the opposite and and that's that's where the good stuff will come you don't know yeah what about that track whatever happened to my rock and roll uh an often picked show closer is is that one of those songs you feel leaves the audience wanting more when when you walk off stage um that one i don't know we, we didn't we, we didn't think when we were writing it that it would kind of have this um this sense even to us that it has that um a timeless like question uh, you know eternal question um that's kind of the uh, the tragedy of it but also it it kind of invigorates you know can we ask it again and can we can we can we say it in a different way and can we bring the, the the spirit you know um again and so so it's it's kind of a not personal test but it's like it's a it's a challenge to see if we can you know we can still meet that level and and i guess that's that's why we've kind of i don't know it, it's, it's the nature of how it evolved live as well because it was kind of it was a, i don't want to say lazy but we kind of went through the motions of the record version and then over the years live just kind of kept expanding and twisting and there's like six different alternative endings to it that we kind of throw in at random depending on you know how urgent the question <laughs> the question seems to be uh, you do some very unusual uh, and very interesting uh, cover versions. You don't do a lot of cover versions. Uh, the John Lennon song, I Don't Want to Be a Soldier, the Bob Dylan one, uh, The Lonesome Death of Hattie Carroll, and Visions of Joanna. Um, you know, what is this telling us about your own personal taste when you dig to, you know, some fairly, you know, obscure uh, songs from some very big artists? Um, I don't know. A lot of times I wish all I did was do cover songs uh, sometimes i wish all we all we did was, was you know kind of come out wearing our heart on both sleeves um uh because i don't know the narcissism of like you know let me tell you my story as if it's never been you know <laughs> uh uh as if this has never been done before um so sometimes yeah i i come from that place of just being a, a music fan and, and you know um that's why i started playing and, and uh wanting to be in a band was that first and foremost rather than you know um yeah writing and telling my you know story or our story but uh those songs when you you know when you can sneak them in um i don't know it's uh it lets lets people in in a different way i guess um and i i do i do like that i like that the dimension the dimension widens and people see like oh okay this is maybe where you guys come from you know and giving them another part of the story so it's cool okay well we look forward to black rebel motorcycle club back in australia uh rob great to talk to you here at noise 11 yeah, man. Sorry, sorry. I got to jump to it, but I appreciate you guys taking the time and uh, I'll see you soon. See you in a week. Man, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before I forget. <laughs>